Hello everyone and welcome to Out of the Park Baseball 22. Today the game was released, uh, at least the beta edition for those who pre-ordered the game, uh, as did I. So the actual game doesn't come out until March 26th, I believe, but people who pre-ordered get a little few days extra here to uh, get the game before everyone else who decides to purchase it normally and today I'm going to pretty much be getting into my playthrough series for this year's edition of the game. Last year I had a series with the Detroit Tigers which went really really well. Um, I played that series for um, about 50 episodes, um, not quite as long as I probably would have liked to as uh, if you remember, I mean if you watched that series that um, basically something happened with the save file and I just couldn't get it back even though I was pretty deep in the series and uh, however that series did go pretty well and then I also started a Rocky series after that which I kind of really didn't um, put that much into but now that next year's edition is out I will definitely be here posting very regularly and now it's time to get into what team we're going to be using for this year's game. First year going to show you quick um, kind of the selected leagues here that I'm going through. Pretty much I usually add a, a good bit of leagues here. I'm pretty much going U.S. Independent Leagues, which I didn't do last year. Cuban, Mexican League, uh, both the KBO, NPB, and uh, World Cup of Baseball. I also don't believe I did that in my Tiger Series last year, but I'm going to be adding it this year just because I think it's a little fun thing. Alright, and from this screen, you can see that the team I'm going to be choosing for this year's save is the Pittsburgh Pirates. The name of my character here as the Pirates GM is going to be Barry Bonds, just because I don't really know what else to name him, and it doesn't really matter. And, of course, Barry Bonds um, played for the Pirates. Of course, that part of his career is not really as infamous as his San Francisco Giants career, but still had a very good career with the Pirates. It's argued that uh, he could have made the Hall of Fame solely just off his Pirates career, or at least the trajectory that his career was on with them, but that's a definitely a debate for another time. I'm going to be playing as the general manager role. I'm not the GM and manager. Um, I played the game this way last year. It's just the way I prefer to play the game. Um, I prefer to make it more real realistic. As you know, in real life, the manager really makes a lot of the day-to-day -day, um, decisions such as lineup, you know, bullpen um, decisions, that kind of thing. And uh, really, I just like to do that more. It gives it more realistic feel. All right, and quickly before we get into um, the team here, I'm going to quickly go over kind of some of the settings that I'm going to be using in this year's game. So as for kind of my personal settings here for our character, um, I don't really like to control a lot of the minor league things. I'm going to pretty much auto the major, I mean, uh, minor league lineups, minor league promotions, minor league free agent signings, all to minor league managers and our assistant GM, Ben Charrington, who, of course, um, recently took over for the Pirates in real life in 2019. Um, so he'll, they'll deal with all that kind of stuff. Don't really feel like micromanaging all of that. And then also, um, we're going to be in charge of hiring minor league personnel. It's kind of something that I believe is kind of important to the game, to progressing players, which are going to have to do a lot of with the Pirates. And now for the fun part, we actually get into the evaluation of our team. And really the main reason why I chose the Pirates is because they're pretty in a pretty desolate situation. Um, they're, at least in my opinion, the worst organization in baseball, probably only really rivaled by the Rockies. I mean, they've just been plagued by horrible, horrible management in the past few years. And um, this offseason, they're absolutely gutted, losing pretty much all of the talent that the roster really had, like guys like Josh Bell, Jameson Tyone, and many, many other guys. Um, and really, this team is pretty devoid of talent uh, at the major league level. Not really many guys here who you can say um, would be a part of the club's future. So it's definitely going to be a ton of turnover and uh, this series is definitely going to be pretty tough considering the, the Pirates budget constraints and things like that. So actually first I'll go over that. Um, our owner is Bob Nutting um, who is probably the toughest 
owner in baseball, the toughest owner to ex succeed with in this game because his uh, fiscal personality is penny pincher. So it will be extremely hard for us to use our already um, small budget, one of the smallest budgets um, in baseball and in this game. And he also is only 58, so he probably isn't going anywhere soon. So and that kind of sucks about this. So we're definitely going to have to be dealing with him for a long time. This is kind of a reason why I thought about not doing the Pirates as this, but I didn't really think there's any other option. Uh, this was pretty clear to me that I pretty much had to do this team just because of the situation that they are in is just so, so bad. Um, however, one of the bright spots about this team being pretty much completely devoid of talent is there's not much in the way of bad contracts. Like the only guy that we have even making over $10 million this year is Gregory Polanco, who is an okay-ish player, um, had a really bad 2020. Um, really hasn't been good in a few years, not really since 2018, where he was about a 3-1 player, which is really what he was um, kind of at that point in his career, but pretty much looks like that he's gone being a really productive player. Um, had a really down, injured 2019, had a also an uh, awful short in 2020 season. But the good thing is, even about this contract, that he is uh, having a team option here for the 2022 season, so... Um, we really only have to pay him for this year, and that's about it. So that's pretty good there. And then um, pretty much everyone else on the team that we have is uh, under team control for a bit here. Um, Adam Frazier, who is probably the best player on this team, uh, has one more year of team control. Um, Tyler Anderson is a veteran arm who's a free agent after the year, and uh, so as is Trevor Cahill uh, and Todd Frazier, and those are really the only kind of veteran guys like that and then pretty much everyone else has uh like i said this team controllable for a bunch of years so uh we'll definitely um use the leverage of their low salaries to our advantage um when going forward so now actually getting into the team um let's go ahead and preview what the hitters look like and our catching tandem actually isn't the worst michael perez and jacob stallings uh, are definitely very usable players they're pretty decent on defense Oh, of course, um, I would like to have uh, much better rated defensive catchers. I always do. Catcher ability, if you don't know, is one of the most important defensive stats in this game um, that really, really affects your pitching. So it's always very important to have a good defensive catcher, just like in real life. And both of these guys, um, while not being the greatest defensive catchers, um, are pretty decent. Um, Michael Price is under team control for a while longer, as is Jacob Stalling, so I really don't have any plans to move off of these guys um, at the moment. There's really no need to, as they're very serviceable and, um, again, have a lot of team control, so they probably will be here for a bit, I would at least assume, or at least one of them. Colin Moran, just basically so-so. Um, as I said, this team is really uh, have that much talent. He's a corner infield, corner outfield guy, although he can't really play much outfield. He's just fine. Um, he actually had a pretty good 2018-2019 for the Pirates, as well as a, a pretty good 2020. He is a decent hitter. Um, he probably is really a, a bench bat or a very low starter in a good team, but he's a fine player to have around for now. And then at second base, we have Adam Frazier, who is definitely the best hitter on this team um actually didn't have a very good 2020 shortened season but uh was pretty good in 2018 and 2019 um pretty good contact hitter guy who does not strike out a lot and um also is pretty versatile uh, mainly plays second base where he's very good and then also is able to play the outfield where he is not quite as good but um is also a serviceable I'm pretty much corner outfielder. I don't think I'll really play him center field because his outfield range isn't that good. Todd Frazier, basically veteran guy here. Um, corner infielder, of course. I'm pretty sure everyone knows who Todd Frazier is. Basically just holding a spot um, on this team, really. Um, I doubt he'll really probably play much. And that's because of the next man, Cabrian Hayes, who is um, the Pirates' best prospect. He'll be having his first full major league season this year came up last year in, uh, in the shortened 60 game season absolutely tore the cover off the ball you can see on um, this hitting slash line here extremely extremely good of course um, he is not going to replicate that um, and is uh, actually 
more known as a defensive um, third baseman. As you can see, his defensive ratings there, which are absolutely fantastic. Um, but he should be also be a very good hitter as well. I'm very excited. Um, he's definitely one of the um, better prospects um, in the league. And um, he'll definitely be uh, the building block that we'll, uh, we will be building our team around here, at least in the first few years. And then here you have pretty much a lot of, uh, of our middle infielders here. Eric Gonzalez, Kevin Newman. I'm both kind of so so. Newman's kind of interesting because he's um, a real contact guy. Pirates actually have a decent amount of these guys. He actually had a pretty incredible 2019. Um, it was about a three win player, 300, 350, about 450 slash line uh, OPS to 800 on the dot. So he was pretty, pretty good there um, in that respect. So. Hopefully, maybe he can do something for us. I'm, you know, not that keen on having him at shortstop. He's not that good defensively, but well, we're not really trying to win games here. He'll be fine. Brian Reynolds, another pretty good player. It's a um, pretty good player that we have, uh, uh, which you know is pretty rare. Um, corner outfield guy, pretty much a left fielder because he doesn't have much arm strength. So, um, but again, more of a contact dish hitter. Not as much as the others because his avoid K's rating isn't nearly as good. I'm definitely a gap power guy, which is good to have in um, PNC Park. Again, a bad 2020 shortened season, but uh, had a huge breakout 2019 season, uh, which was his rookie year. Of course, he is 26, so a bit of an advanced age for a rookie, but still a uh, pretty good player that I'm happy to have. Then we've got uh, Anthony Alford here, who's our starting center fielder. Pretty good defensively. Um, it's pretty much it. Um, hasn't had much major league experience, although he was in the... Blue Jays organization for a long, long time. And then we have Dustin Fowler here, who is isn't really interesting. I mean, uh, I don't like his hitting ratings at all. Very low discipline rating, uh, which is something that I look for. Um, I prefer guys with a high discipline rating so they get on base. Brian Goodwin, uh, just kind of a backup, standard backup infielder. Um, again, a lot of these guys probably won't be around for long. And then Gregory Polanco, as I mentioned earlier. He is in right field for us this year, and we'll see bulk of the playing time. And then you can see our lineup here. I'm definitely not too too keen on this here, but again, I'm not really you know we're not in a position where I'm trying to compete here, so I could really care less about optimizing this lineup at this point, or even having a manager that um, has a lineup that I think would be preferable. So just that's just fine for now, and we're gonna go forward. And then pitching staff here again, not fantastic, although Mitch Keller is a pretty good pitching uh, spec here. Um, three plus pitches here, really good fastball curve combo. Also has a good slider and an okay changeup to play off of that. Um, he saw some major league time in 2019 where he was uh, less than stellar. I'm not quite sure why his um, war here is um, so highly rated. Um, with how the stats were, but it definitely must be like a weird thing or something. I'm not quite sure what's going on there. And then uh, he also pitched in 2020, um, which you know, good ERA here, um, decent whip, but um, his walk to strikeout splits were awful. Um, pretty bad there. His FIP is definitely way, way higher, which of course is a better way to measure pitcher performance, um, and definitely something that I'll be using. Um, throughout the series, which, of course, um, if you happen to watch my Tiger series last year, um, I use uh, advanced metrics quite a bit in my series. TJ Brubaker here, just kind of a meh, um, just filler starter here, not really anything special. I um, doubt he'll be around for a while. Chad Cool, another guy who's honestly pretty much identically rated to Brubaker, Stephen Brault. Um, Pretty good pitches, not a ton of control. Uh, I'd probably prefer him in more of a reliever role, um, but he's okay. And then we have Tyler Anderson, of course, I mentioned him earlier. And again, pretty much built as all of our starters, just kind of really average arms. Nothing extraordinary. As for the bullpen, Richard Rodriguez is actually a pretty decent reliever, although, of course, it's not really worth having good relievers if your pitching is so bad in general but I mean he's under team control for a while and we'll probably just keep him around um, for that aspect and then we have uh, pretty much um, 
not a very good bullpen. Uh, Trevor Cahill and David Bednar, I mean, these guys aren't even good enough to really be worth going over. Um, actually, Bednar is not too bad. Huh? He's really got some plus stuff, not great control. So he actually could not be uh, that bad here. Probably should have looked into that before I made a snap judgment there. Um, Hartley here, he's kind of an interesting guy. Lots of movement, uh, extreme ground ball guy. Um, kind of interesting guy here. Um, of course, ground ball pitchers are pretty successful um, in both um, this game and in the major leagues because, of course, when you hit the ball into the air, um, you know, there's always a chance it could be a home run and uh, balls hit in the air are also generally hit harder. Of course, rolling balls on the ground as a pitcher um, is much better and uh, much more effective. Kyle Crick, um, pretty decent reliever right here. Um, Righty out of the bullpen. Not an um, absolute ton of major league experience. Um, was actually good in 2018 out of the bullpen for them, but a decent piece here. Our bullpen actually here isn't too, too bad. Michael Feliz. Um, plus stuff, not great control. Um, if you've played any OTP games in the past, he's pretty much uh, the darling of those games being super, super highly rated potential wise. And at least for me, he never really ever panned out. Um, Definitely comment uh, if you uh, had him pan out for you or anything like that. But he's a pretty notorious OTP reliever who's always available in like an expansion if anyone has tried anything like that. Chris Stratton, another kind of meh reliever here. I actually don't really like his ratings because of how just kind of average they are. And that's Sean Poppin here, another righty ground baller. Um, kind of decent ratings. Again, another lower control. Um, real good fastball slider combo. I think uh, he is actually pretty decent here. Also went to Harvard. Interesting little nugget right there. And now I've advanced us to opening day here so we can quick take a look at kind of what our owner thinks about our team. And uh, he just wants us to stay respectable, which definitely might be possible. And then we have, uh, most importantly here, the 100 uh, top prospects in the league. And as you can see, we've got two guys here in the top 10 in the entire league. First, of course, Cabrian Hayes, who I mentioned, um, very good player, and he will be um, on our major league roster for the entirety of the season, so he will lose his prospect eligibility this year, and uh, hopefully win rookie of the year, which would be uh, kind of cool to see. Then the other guy we have here is Quinton Priester, a starting pitcher prospect here, and uh, honestly, a little bit of a two-way prospect here, not uh, really fantastically rated on um, kind of a setting potential here, but I mean, maybe it could be used as a bit of a two-way player, maybe a pinch hitter if no one else is available. Also, can play okay-ish defense, not a lot of range, but of course, a uh, fantastic arm out in the outfield. And oops, did not mean to do that. But he, uh, he's got a plus fastball, plus curveball, okay changeup. Um, control kind of iffy right now, and not good movement and. Not a ton of um, stuff rating. So he probably will give up a decent amount of homers. Um, because uh, the movement rating, I believe, um, correlates to giving up home runs. Um, honestly, in my mind right now, he probably projects as more of a good bullpen piece. Because he really does have two good pitches. Uh, it definitely is very dependent on just how well his control rating develops. If it um, can get pretty high all the way up to 55, he could definitely be an effective starter. But um, if it remains pretty low, he definitely will not be able to be a um, starter, at least not a uh, real effective one. And then here looking at the top prospects here, um, top systems I should say, we are ranked 6th. Of course, I'm very, very top heavy, both Priester and Hayes, both in the top 10. And then we also have Nick Gonzalez, who is a middle infield prospect um pretty much just the second base prospect because with his defensive ratings i would not put him at shortstop um his ratings just aren't uh, aren't good enough to warrant playing him at a premium defensive position like shortstop and he can also play a little outfield so maybe he could be a player um, a bit like brian reynolds or adam frazier who um actually no brian reynolds can't play the infield but um, adam frazier who could play second base um, can play all three outfield positions. Uh, Gonzalez, I wouldn't really put him in center field or actually even right field with his low arm, but I play him in left field. 
um, if I had to, and he seems like a fine player to me. Um, gonna hit for a lot of gap power. Um, his, his eye develops how it uh, projects here, and it should be pretty good. So uh, definitely a player that I will keep my eye on. Now something very important to this year's game, which is actually a new addition for Out of the Park Baseball 22, is the staff roles screen. So previously, of course, um, you were only had a manager, a pitching coach, and a hitting coach for each level, and that uh, carried through, um, as I said, for each level. But at the major league level now, you uh, now have um, not only uh, a bench coach, which actually was there um, previously, but you now have a uh, base coach as a third and first base coach here. So uh, that adds a definitely a uh, interesting dynamic to this year, and uh, your staff cohesion matters. Um, of course, while we play through the game, we'll learn just as uh, much as... Uh, just how much the staff roles correlate uh, to success and really how important they are, um, which we're definitely going to keep an eye on. But as of right now, I mean, our coaching staff is very good as is. Um, it's content. It's just meh, um, which I mean, is that surprising. But one thing that I also realize I just have to do is scouting director. Um, it's fair right now, and we definitely going to need a better scouting director Ooh, and definitely a better trainer. Um, as this guy also isn't very good, but I think I will do that all in the next episode as for now, um, pretty much done previewing the team. So that's going to take us out of this first introductory episode. So thank you guys for watching. Um, definitely like, and subscribe. Uh, let me know what you thought of the video. Um, or if you're excited to see this pirate series, I'm definitely excited to get it going after having a pretty successful, um, OTP series last year. And uh, hoping to have another successful one this year. So thank you guys for watching and uh, I'll see you guys in the next episode.